You know, the other day I was driving as a child, and somebody said, Bishop, I, I want you to preach. And when we were praying, that person trusted God for a miracle of a sick child who had been somehow um, uh, sick for many, many years. And he said, Bishop, I didn't know there's instant healing. It was instant. And another man uh, was in our Sunday service. That man uh, is a woman. Is a woman. Whenever I welcome people on Sunday, she gets in, walking slowly, slowly. Her legs are deformed. On Sunday when we were praying, she believed. She believed. When she went home, the lady was completely healed, no pain. She jumped around. She, she felt, is it, is it Leo me? He said, no. And she could bishop do something. I am healed. I am able to jump around the house. There's miracle in this place. God is powerful. The last week, but one, I remember I prayed for a lady who was brought in the church uh, in our meeting. We normally pray for people in the church. Uh, midweek days, we have this prayer for people. And these parents brought their daughter. She was carried upstairs to my office. Legs were sick, could not walk. And the girl was dark and deaf. No speaking, no hearing. Something interesting. As we met in my office, you know, my sister, can I walk? She started walking. I, I, and we prayed. You know what happened? As we prayed, I was called two hours later. The parents said, no, Bishop, before then we could not leave this lady in the house. She was really, really sick. But when they entered the house, the girl started speaking, washing utensils, walking around, and the following week she came by herself to the office. He said, Bishop, I am the one who could not speak. I am the one who could not walk, but now I'm speaking, I can hear, and I tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are releasing miracles on your body, soul, and spirit. It is possible. So as I speak now, just receive your healing. Be covered. That's our topic, the, uh, the cover of the Lord. In the, how, how do you release the cover? Now, another level, last time we showed how prayer can cover. Now, there's what we call covenant promises. Covenant promises in the Bible are promises that God releases on people who are walking with him. You know, as we read in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3, two cannot walk together unless they agree. It's God who was demanding a walk with agreement. A walk with agreement. Here are these friends. If there's anything that is lacking, it's not the walk. It's the agreement. People are in the church. But God wants to, to understand you through agreement. What did we agree about your body holiness? What did you agree about your self-control? What did God agree with you? About you are ministering the church. God, you, it's like in, in a wedding. You like to know if this man is your husband, what covenant do you have? How can you trust him? How can I be in Johannesburg and my husband is in Rome and I still can practice my marriage in Johannesburg knowing that I'm still in covenant? Covenant has content. Covenant has commitment. Covenant has assurance. Covenant has demands. Covenant has promises. Covenant, covenant has outcome. And anytime God starts a walk with you and you make an agreement, a firm agreement that you keep, that agreement is like network. You are so clear in the mind of God. God can even predict. 
God can even can even even angels, if they ask, where will this man be tomorrow? They know how you work with God. They can say, tomorrow, at such a time, we know she will be praying. She or he will be praying. Where will that man be on Sunday, 6 a.m.? Even they just know you have an agreement with God. You are always on time. You are always in the church by that time. If the church is going out for crusade and angels ask, where do you think Mr. Joseph will be? They say, we know very well he will be in the crusade. Why? Because that person has an agreement, ministerial agreement, holiness agreement, uh, an agreement, a covenant that he keeps. A covenant that he obeys. He is a keeper of covenant. People who keep covenant with God will experience cover. Cover. When God knows, you become like a VIP in the kingdom. If God knows you are so faithful and you never violate the agreement, I tell you, God can bless you. God can be anything to you. If you can be anything to God, God can also be anything to you. Yes, if you can endure anything for God, God can also endure anything with you. If you can be anything for God, God can also be anything for you. If you can do anything for God, God can also commit himself to do anything to you. That's how God operates. God honors those who honor him. You know, sometimes we treat God like God is there to supply. God is there to meet needs. God has an obligation to meet needs. Uh, no, God says he will honor those who honor him. God needs assurance. That's very, very important. If you go through the Bible. Now, I want to say something. Let's think about it. You know, when God called Israel, Israel out of Egypt, they reached a point where God needed a covenant. If I'm going to work with these people, we need to agree on some areas. And I remember there was a time I read for you that is Exodus uh, chapter 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if you will indeed, Exodus 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. That God wants not just to walk with them in the wilderness. He wants to have an agreement. And God is saying, this is my part. God is saying, this is my part in this agreement. This is my demand. He says, if you will indeed obey my voice. Number two. And keep my covenant. What is the outcome? This is the outcome. You shall be a special treasure to me. Above all people. For all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests. And a holy nation. These are three things that God you do. If the agreement is kept. How do, how do we keep it? God says keep the, keep the covenant. And obey his voice. This, this, this is the kind of lifestyle that can cause God to, co to cover you. That can cause the network of heaven to follow you. If God commanded me to pray or to do something. And I've always kept it. That will always cause network between my life and the throne of heaven. And some people don't know the secret. People want just to pray, God give me this, give me this. But I want to introduce you to covenant work. God does not only want you to pray. He wants you to live a lifestyle whereby you and him, you are together in covenant work. And that's why the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, the same words are repeated. The regent tree, obey the voice. Be careful to keep the covenant. What does the God say? I will exalt you above nation. 
This blessing shall follow you and overtake you. A covenant life is important. A covenant life is important. If you read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, God has given, given us exceedingly precious promises that we may be partakers of godliness. Through the promises, we will be partakers of godliness. Go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. God says, bring all the tithe into my storehouse. Test me in this way. And you discover that I'll open the windows of heaven, the front gates of heaven, pour blessings until you not have room to receive. Look at that. God wants you to walk in agreement with that promise. If it says, bring all the tithe and all my offerings into my storehouse. Be so faithful and clean about it. And I will do this and do this and do this. In the covenant walk, you connect with God. And this can flow with you along the way. How comes, friends, if today I pray for blessings and I don't give tithe faith free? I'm contradicting the covenant life. Blessings are a product of faithfulness. Blessings are a product of faithfulness. In actually, if I don't give tithe, what God expects me to do in prayer is to promise him whether I'm going to be faithful in tithing, but not to ask for blessings. I'm not denying that you can ask for blessings, but that according to the order, of God, you need to understand that. Now, another way that you experience cover is when you put on all the weapons of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. Tricks and strategies of the devil will be overcome when you put on the whole armor. It's a cover. And the Bible gives a list of the all. Oh, it talks about uh -huh. you got verse 13. Ephesians 6 verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all start. Talks about truth, righteousness. There are several components, several parts. But Bible talks about this, what, what constitutes, what makes up, what comprises the armor. One, the truth for the mouth of God. The Truth for the mother of God. Number two, righteousness in the heart. Righteousness is powerful thing that build up in your heart when you are right with God. You can start before demons. You can start before adversities and say, I know my redeemer lives. Righteousness. And the second part, component, part of the weapon is preparation for the gospel. Whereby you are like the wise, the wise virgin, eh? You have in oil, enough oil for use now and reserved oil in case, in case something else happened. You have not only anointing to use now, but I have anointing reserved. Sometimes we pray and fast, not because we have a, some pain somewhere, but we need extra oil to keep. In other words, so that if the enemy strikes, I have anointing to use now, and in case I am attacked without notice, I have reserved oil to use. We call that laziness. Today, some people, when you walk out there, you, you are not ready even to pray for the sick. You are not ready to tell somebody Christ can save you. You are not ready to rebuke a demon. It's so bad when you get out with an attitude that you are not ready. If today somebody comes and says, please pray for my sick brother, that you have to go back to prayer again. 
one of the weapons is laziness. Laziness. I have prayed enough. I am so much ready to attack. Not because, you know, like now if you go to barracks, the army, those guys are ever ready. In case there's attack, they can strike. You don't dress because the enemy has come. You dress knowing very well any time you can fight. Any time you can fight. Another thing, you put on the armor so that the enemy you know that you have the armor. You know when the enemy comes around and fight, you don't have the cover. No weapons. No weapons. If today somebody who is a thug, somebody who is a, a thief, somebody who is evil, fights as the policemen moving around don't have guns, don't have the weapons, they know they can attack the police. They know these people are not able to defend themselves. Do you know putting on the weapons, the whole armor, by itself is a good sign to the enemy? When Satan comes, you know this man is awake. You know whatever is a thief. A thief, when he comes and notices you are awake, there's a likelihood the thief will run away. If the devil notices I am awake in prayer, awake in the truth of God, awake in faith, awake in leadiness, awake in righteousness, awake in prayer, when he finds me awake, he will run away. Let the thief know you are not asleep. Let the thief know you are, you are put on the whole armor. Let the devil, even if he, he comes from behind, notice that man is still covered. If he comes from the sides, from above, you have the helmet of salvation that covers your brain. What is that? Your mind is saved. You know one of the areas that we need to be saved is your thoughts, thought life, the mind. That's what the Bible talks about, the helmet of salvation on your head. My mind is saved. The enemy wanted to put it in my mind. Funny, funny imagination and memories. The devil wanted to put some interest. Sometimes you wonder, somebody who opens up to pornography, somebody who design how to go and steal, how to go and fornicate, is because your mind is not saved. You need to have the mind saved. Let the devil know. He can't just put an idea in your mind. There are people who mind is not covered. So you realize that when you are seated somewhere alone, you develop insight into evil. You discover evil instead of discovering the glory of God. So that's, you need to have that. And that's what we are saying. One of the areas that we need to cover is put on the whole armor. That the Bible says in, in Ephesians 6 verse 13, it is your duty and my duty. It takes take up the whole armor. Every component of, wep of godly weapons. Take up the whole armor of God that you be able to be stirred in the evil days. And having done all this, start now waiting. Start firm. That's another way. That is, you need to be covered by godly weapons. That is the truth righteousness, readiness of the gospel and, uh, and being awake in anointing, praying in the spirit, faith that can resist the devil in his watch, and all this uh, is very, very important, and also the cover of your mind with salvation. Your mind remains saved, and that one will really help us. And, and you notice in verse 8, it is a Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this earth with all persevering and supplication for all saints. That is praying. People don't know that praying in the Holy Spirit. Not just praying in understanding. You know sometimes when you pray for Bishop Gatimo with your understanding is okay. But you realize your understanding is limited. The Father knows me better. The Holy Spirit knows me better. If you pray for me in the Holy Spirit, you discover you are praying differently and deeply. 
the way the Holy Spirit knows me. You could be praying for me, maybe for a new car, but the Holy Spirit wants to provide a new anointing, wants to provide uh, maybe a new building. That's why when you pray in the Spirit, that is also a weapon, a weapon of our warfare. That is very important. Another area where we need the cover, and it helps a lot, I would, I would like to note, I would, I'll measure it very quickly, is not leaving areas of life unattended. Have you ever noticed the areas that you left unattended, they are opening to weakness, wickedness, temptation, and attack. You know, and listeners may contribute to this. You know, in normal life, even in normal life, you can open up to the devil. There's an area in your office that was left unattended. Another one left unattended. Another issue was unattended. For instance, uh, um, I've come, you know we do the crisis. And sometimes somebody calls you, Bishop, I'm sick. Bishop, I'm undergoing this. If I leave that issue unattended, it will get worse. But we, if I move swiftly and say, I am coming to take you to hospital. I am coming to feed you. I am coming to address the enemies of your soul. I am coming to that police station to see what they are saying. What I'm, what I'm doing is that I am coming, that, attending that issue is enough cover. Do you know some of us, we would have been safe, but all along since we were young, we left so many things unattended, so many seasons, a season that you would have attended when you were a teenager. You are supposed to concentrate on your studies. You failed. You left that area unattended. When you got to maybe at the age of 30, you are supposed to uh, to work very hard for your degree. Or maybe, or maybe make use of, of opportunity. There was an opening, scholarship, but you just ignored. At the age of 40, there was some lad somewhere that you could have acquired for your family. You ignored. Those areas, seasons in life that you ignored, that were not attended later in your life, will be great opening to curses. Great opening to sufferings. Great opening. You know, sometimes we, we, we fly out of the country. And some places where you go, they demand that you prove, even if you want, you want to preach, yes. You know, the proof. Give us your profile. There are places you cannot preach, however good you are. Give us your profile. Where did you attend your primary school? Where did you attend your high school? How many degrees do you have? Who is your wife? They even ask, what is your wife doing? The level of her education. If you have children, uh -huh. if you have a preacher, they ask you, how many services do you have? You know why? Because if you are to preach in a church of 10,000, they don't expect you to perform well if you have come from a church of 200 people. They don't expect you to preach content if you have never been to school. You know, the areas that you ignored later becomes opening to attack. There will be a demand later of your life, of what you acquired. For instance, today, I remember when we were growing up, property in Nairobi was cheaper. 20,000. You know, we were discussing with somebody this morning, the estate where I'm living now, for you to acquire property, you need at least maybe 30 million or 40 million. And he was telling me, several years ago, it was 50,000. And that person was able to acquire it then. If it were today, 
and you are told, can you please pay 40 million for this property? It's becoming challenging. You realize an area that you ignored, and that's why the youth, our family, should be awake in every season. If it is time for high school, be awake. Time for discipline, be awake. Time for self-control so that you can get through, be awake. For instance, for any teenager to get through from 12 years to 25 years around there, until you, you get what we call uh, a, 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 a complete decision and commitment to your career, you need to control yourself. Self-control. Yes, self-control of your sexuality. Self-control of your feelings so that you can get through. Any youth who ignored that, later in life, you are not able to run the race as you desire. You fornicated, you lost your capacity. Like now we have talked about righteousness as a weapon. You lost your righteousness. Don't lose it, friends. Put on the whole armor, even when you are a teenager. Tell those men, I have a commitment before God. I have my methodology and pattern of living which is not conforming to the standards of men, but to the demands of the gospel. I cannot sin. You know Joseph in Genesis chapter 29 was tempted by the wife of Potiphar. She was a beautiful woman. And they were alone in the house. Alone somewhere. But Joseph would say, how can I do such an evil thing before the eyes of God? Do you know something? That was the starting point for his ascending to become prime minister. That's how God works, friends, and the Lord help us in just name. Don't leave areas and encourage your son when he is 18 years. Cover that area with what is supposed to be done. When you are 25 years, cover that area with what is supposed to be done. Some of the old people now are crying. I met one around the church. That man in 1973, he used to work as a, a, as a very qualified painter and sign writer. Those who were alive by then, Kenyan economy was so strong, but the strongest currency was, I think, 50 shillings, around 50 shillings. Later in the 70s, we went to 100 shillings. That man would earn 50 shillings daily. And he said, Bishop, 50 shillings was enough to buy a house in Nairobi. 50 shillings was enough to buy a plot. Maybe have an acre or an acre in Mobasa Road. But the man who spent all the money drinking. Now he is old. And the only property he has is quarter an acre that was inherited from his father. And he has about nine children. His daughters, they just elope with men. No one pays dowry. Young men are not educated. His sons are not educated. They, they are... They are just fighting against each other in that small property. And the man now is 85 years, around 90 years, crying as a bishop, I wish I knew. He also said, I wish I were in a church where people were preached to very well. He said the church he went to, he was not, he was not led to true repentance. Leaving alcoholism and all other things. He was accommodated. He went to a church where he was accommodated the way he was. We need to be in a church whereby we tell you, brother, you need to be renewed, friends. You need to repentance. You need to arise. You need to educate your children. You need to acquire property. You need, you need. We challenge you to live up to the season. That's one area life becomes covered. And I, that... Uh, that one does not need prayer, friends. It, uh, uh, that one does not need revelation. It's true. It's evident. Even some of you who are watching, you know what happened when you're a teenager. If you'd have behaved well when you're a teenager, by now you'll be enjoying the fruit of things that you attended as a teenager. Please don't leave any season or any stage of your life unattended. Cover areas. And then another thing, because we may not finish this today, Another area is Revelation 12 verse 11. It says, when John saw 
uh, the multitude in heaven. And God narrated the warfare between the church, between Israel, between the righteous and the devil. Eh? Warfare in heaven is. Warfare on earth. Eh? That of house Lucifer descended. How Antichrist uh, will fight against a saint. It ended up by, by this statement. Verse 11. And they overcame him. Who? The devil. If you read Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1 to 10, it talks about heavy battle from heaven to, to the earth. Powers of darkness, Lucifer, dragon, the old serpent, Satan, and the righteous people. Battle, battle, fierce battle. And it culminates, it concludes by saying, and the saint overcame the devil. How? And they overcame Satan. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. There are three things. One, the word of their testimony. I wanted the truth. Anytime you start and say, Jesus is Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll never lack. You release to the air fire anointing. That no demon, no antichrist can with really start. Word of your testimony. You say it. And in your saying, don't say, I am good. I don't take this. Tell people, I don't take this. Because Jesus Christ is my Lord. I do not attend such places. Why? I am covered in the blood of Jesus. If you fight something evil in your dream. Because some of you are getting attacks in dreams. That I saw somebody running after me in a dream. Rise up right away and say, I cover myself and my life in the blood of Jesus Christ. You enter into a meeting where you sense the satanism and witchcraft. Just say it. I release the blood of Christ on this situation. Hallelujah. They overcame the devil. Is it there? By three things. The word of their testimony. And the blood of the Lamb, or the blood of just Christ, and sacrificial love, they never loved themselves. They gave themselves to the Lord to the death. To death. You know, you know, an overcomer is ultimately determined by the finishing. You know, you see, like now, if you read Second uh, Timothy chapter four, verse six to eight, Paul was in prison. And there were, he, was, he was almost to be killed. And he said, they have started to pour my blood in the prisons. He was being tortured. But Paul finished the race. He said, I have kept the faith. Yes, I have kept the faith. I fought the good battle. I have finished my course. Look at that. Finishing is important. No, but you notice, when Paul talks about finishing, he, he says, I have kept the faith. Which means the quality of your work is important also. All along, I kept the faith. All along, I fought the good fight. You know, there are people who finished the race, but they never fought. They agreed with the world. There are people who finished the race, but they never kept the faith. When you, are, you know, there are people who keep on sneaking out of the church, then coming back. Sneaking, then coming back. God does not only observe the way you are sitting in the church or the way you finish this year or the other year. God also keep, keep, keep keen record on how you run. If you are running a race and you finish, and on the way you never obeyed the rule of the race, you get disqualified although you finish. And that's why when Paul was giving the three things, of, of how he finished, uh, how he ended up in life. He said, I've kept the faith, I've fought the good fight, and I've finished the race. Finishing the race is okay, but keep faith and fought, fight the good fight. On the way, I didn't, I didn't conform. I did not compromise. I fought. So I have finished well. And that's why we are saying three things. They overcame the devil by... 
one, the word of their testimony. I pray that the, your testimony cover you at the place of work. Let the fornicators, let the evil men, let those who attack, let Antichrist know. The God worker, let that evil supervisor know. Your testimony is clear. Your testimony cover you. Not your own human testimony. It is Jesus Christ's testimony. He is the Lord. He overcame death and powers of hell. Testimony to the blood of Jesus. Three, you love Christ so much to the end. Let the demons know, I love Christ so much that I am committed to finish the race. Do you know one of the issues that we need to assure ourselves and to declare to the devil and the world is that we cannot sin. We cannot fornicate. We will not steal. There are people who live, although you don't tell us. Deep within you, you know, if this one happened, I can compromise this way. If things get worse, I'll do this. God knows your heart. Even the devil knows. Even if you worship, he knows this one. If he doesn't get married by next year, he will run away from the church. This one. If today the wife eh, gets a scholarship to study in Japan for two years, this man will not persevere. This man is evil. Let it be known. Let the devil know about my commitment, even for the, for the, the path remaining in my race, that I will not sin. Paul says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And he said, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Loving God to the end. Those are three areas that cover you. And demons should know it. The word of your testimony is so clear. You can't compromise. Number two, the blood of Christ, the way you use it on yourself and on situations. And number three, you love Christ. Even the demons know the remaining part of your life. Even if you live the next 40 years, you cannot compromise. You cannot sin. Let people confirm it. Let people, I remember one time, it was, I was a youth, and there was this woman, I think it was a lady, it was a pastor, I don't know, I can't remember. He said, can I talk to you, Pastor Katima? Yes. Are you not, are you normal? Are you a human being? Are you a man like others? What did, why, 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 why? He said, I have been tempting you for the last three years. The way men, women tempt men. And pastor, you never responded. I said, yes, because I am saved. And I'm saved towards heaven. I am saved towards my destiny. I remember one time we had guests from UK. And the this lady who, who gave my testimony to my wife. She said, Mrs. Bishop, yes, Bishop is saved. I wanted to know, why come all the way from Britain to tell my wife that I am saved? I came to discover the trips that have made abroad. People are keen. It is, we, for the, about eight or ten trips, it's a bishop, we have observed you. You are serious. You are not immoral. I said, yes, because I am determined to live to the end. Let the devil know you are saved to the earth. Do not keep on falling, falling, falling. Otherwise, if you keep on falling, at the end there, you'll be disqualified. Keep the faith. Fight, the, fight a good battle. Finish the race qualified. That's one area we cover our lives. I say by God's grace, be covered, my friend. Be covered, be covered, be covered. The Lord, you bless you. Maybe by God's grace next time, we will go to that part of that. And I also promised you to, to cover a lesson on what, what happens in his presence. I didn't finish. I think I'll pay all the debts. The Holy Ghost, you command me. You will lead me to that. Because we want you to get the whole message. My God, the Lord we serve, will keep you covered.
And next time you see three other areas of how you can get covered until you finish the race. Father, I now release the blood of Jesus to cover that brother and that sister. And I pray that you remove fear in that person. That the testimony, the word of his testimony will be powerful. Will be a sword of the spirit in every area of life. And now by the word of God, I rebuke Satan and his work. I rebuke the works of darkness. I destroy sin. I dethrone the enemy. I enthrone Jesus and his word. And now I speak to that sickness. I speak to that weakness. I speak to that need. I speak to that marital issue. I speak to that youth who is languishing in pain, in, in temptation. I declare victory. You be an overcomer now by the word of your testimony. The blood of Jesus Christ and love Christ to the end. Satan, I rebuke your deception. Every word, every feeling that you're instilling on that brother is now over. Devil, you are a thief, you are a murderer, I curse you. And in just name, I declare all people who are watching are covered, secure. I declare an opening for financial favor. I declare declare peace of mind. I declare deliverance from immorality and alcoholism, drug addiction. I declare deliverance now. I rebuke death and by the word of God, I release healing. In Christ we pray and believe. Amen.